sure at this. I once preached a sermon 25 years ago, and they never asked me back. <laughs> so, here's my second shot. It's pretty scary. Um, I wanted to also make sure that you're doing something. We, we, uh, Joy mentioned we're giving away Bibles and E100, little Bible study we're doing. E100 is nothing more than a punch card, and they're over there on the nav tables, and it's 100 scriptures. Um, and if you don't have a Bible, and even if you know you can't find your Bible or something, we have the message there, and Don, Donna, my lovely wife, is holding up, Vanna White is over there, it's Donna. <laughs> but holding up those E100 cards, you can take a card home with you, um, and as you read the scripture, just punch out the thing, okay? And we've only punched out for, for two weeks now, which are five days a week. So Monday through Friday, you read your scripture, you punch out the card. And if you want to be part of the online part, which is nothing more than, here's that same scripture again on the email, but it also includes something to think about on that scripture. And if we get feedback, then uh, Reverend Steve back there is going to send you an email. Just put your email address um, and, and contact information, send it to Jeremy. His, his contact information is on the bulletin that uh, you should have had that we ran out of because we didn't know that there were so many evangelical people on Perdido Key telling everybody to come on down to the full band on Sunday. No worry, because we print like 350 bulletins and we have none left. So a little, a little under, under, I said, i got to preach, y'all got to keep the crowd down. <laughs> scary that. Um, and if you have that bulletin, you can fly, flip through it, you're going to find our scripture today. Um, and I want to read that, and then we'll have a prayer. And this is from the message. Um, and, and this is, by the way, in this week's E100. And what a great... I lucked out. Poor Dave Marnell, no children, had to, re, had to get up here and give a sermon on, on raising kids. All right, well, so... I know how to kill kids, so this is what this is about. Um, after all this, God tested Abraham. God said, Abraham? Yes, answered Abraham. I'm listening. He said, take your dear son Isaac with whom you love, whom you love, to the land of Mora, and sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I will point out to you. Abraham got up early in the morning and saddled his donkey. He took his two young servants and his son Isaac. He had split wood for the burnt offering. He set out a place that God had directed him. On the third day, he looked up and he saw the place in the distance. Abraham told his two young servants, stay here with the donkey, the boy and I are going to go over there to worship, and then we'll come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and gave it to Isaac, to his son, to carry. They, he carried the flint and the knife, and the two of them went off together. Isaac said to Abraham, his father, Father, yes, my son, we have flint and wood, but where's the sheep for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God, son, sorry, son, God will see to it that there is a sheep for the burnt offering. And they kept on walking together. When they arrived at the place to which God had directed him, Abraham built an altar. Altar. He laid out the wood, and then he tied up Isaac, and he laid him out on the wood. Abraham reached out, and he took the knife to kill his son. But just then, the angel of God called down from him, to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Yes, I am listening. Do not lay a, don't lay a hand on that boy. Don't touch him. Now I know how fearlessly you fear God. You didn't hesitate to place your son, your dear son, on an altar for me. Abraham looked up and he saw a ram caught by its thorns, horns in the thicket. Abraham took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead to his son. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we all are gathered here today and somehow we ended up here in the floor of Bama to worship you. Lord, we pray that you send your Holy Spirit into this place. Lord, pray that the words that come out of my mouth don't run anyone away and, and that you speak to people's hearts. That would be awesome. And Lord, you make us open for that. Lord, I pray too that you be with all the hurts and all the, all the things going on in this world. We heard some even be right before the service. Lord, I, I pray that you, you comfort those in need and maybe we'll just get all through this together and come back to see you later. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I've never preached from a podium. Actually, I've only preached one other time, and I've read the whole thing, so I'm not going to read today. One page. Um, <clears throat> I have come to learn to follow God, and that's what really this sermon is about, is following God. 
Abraham was following God. And he was tested. Pretty strong test. Kill your son. The son that had been promised. The son that, if you look out on that beach and see all that sand, Abraham was promised that through Isaac, your descendants are going to be like sand on the beach. He told them that as a promise. And then he said, later, take your son out and kill him. But he didn't. He stopped it. I had, um, I had, back in 2006, I belonged to a group that helped start a church in, in Helena, Alabama. It's called God, Church of God Ben. And I came on the first Sunday they started meeting in the school, uh, which they later grew and grew and grew, and then we grew up a building across the street, and now it's still there today. It's kind of a neat story. Um, but in that group, we were all busy doing like we're doing here. We're running around, we're hanging, hauling water and stuff. And, uh, they had Krispy Kreme donuts. They're a little bit higher end, I guess. Than we and and one day I was going along, and we had this men's group going. And I got a call from one of the guys in the men's group. His name was Craig. Um, Craig Payne. I'll say his name. He was a comptroller up in Pelham. Um, Craig was broken up, and he had a story to tell me that was just heartbreaking. And he said that he he was just on the phone with his sister-in-law, and she was in Mobile. And she was driving down the road. She was in some kind of an accident. And he said, John, I, I think she died while I was on the phone. I think she died right there. Well, the church came together for this family. And, and Craig and Angela are dear friends and members of the family. And this was her sister. And they talked three or four times a day. They are really tight, even though they were in two different cities. And we all got together to go down for the visitation and the funeral. And... and, and Nicole was her name, Nicole Costello. Nicole was driving down Moffett Road. She had her two-year-old Isabel in the back seat. And she was nine months pregnant, due in two weeks. And she's driving down the road, and some other guy was driving down the road, and he was following his wife. And his wife called him and said, hey, that guy cut me off. And so he turned his truck around, or his car around, and he went screaming up Moffett Road the wrong direction and hit Angela head on, killed her killed her baby that was inside of her. Two weeks from delivery. And the little girl survived. And so we went down for this tragedy, this terrible tragedy. And I go into the funeral home with a couple of guys from the men's group. And what are you going to do and say? I saw Craig up front and said, well, we're going to go to support Craig. And when I got to the front and, and Craig thanked us for coming, and I looked down in the casket and they did a C-section and they put the baby in our arms. There's not a lot in this life that will prepare you for that. And so I saw that. And I was tore up pretty bad. And made my way outside. I called Donna and she was on, uh, on a call and couldn't take it and all this. But um, I just had to deal with some anger. It was sad. This, this mother and child were killed. Isabel survived, but the mother and child were killed. And it was stupid. It was evil. It was evil in this world. Why did God let this girl... Now, let me tell you about Nicole. She was in a church plant down there. They were starting a new church. She ran the children's ministry. She, she I felt pretty confident, was in heaven with her baby, with God. But still, I'm going, why do you do this? What kind of God lets that happen? So I was, I was just shocked, and we went to the funeral the next day. And because we had a strong group of men, I didn't let them hit what I hit. So before they went in, we all met, we prayed, and I says, brace yourself before you go to the front. That's all I told them. And I got a couple, thank you. Because if you didn't know that was what you were going to see, it was quite shocking. So we're all sitting there, and we're going, what is going on? And what is this minister going to say? And they had to borrow a church to do the funeral because they didn't have one yet. So they borrowed a Methodist church and they're having the funeral. And he gets up there and he, and he says something very interesting. He says, God did not want this to happen. He's pointing to the casket. He said, God did not want this to happen. This was not the plan. This is not what this is all about. We had a plan. We were in the garden. God was walking with us. And we chose to sin. Adam and Eve's son, 
sinned and they kicked us out of the garden. He says, you're going to have pain. You're going to have death. You're going to work your whole life. Your wife's going to have childbirth. And it's going to hurt. And Sean shared that scripture last week because I watched the video. And when, when he said that, I realized something. that I never really understood what being a Christian was. That I didn't understand that Christianity is about the fall. It's about us. That we chose to leave Him. It's been real clear to me this week. I've been praying a lot, of course, getting ready for the sermon, um, how this all works. But I'll see if I can make any sense out of it. By the way, the guy that hit her came in a wheelchair to court. Um, they could not find him guilty of murder of the baby because there wasn't a law passed. He was sentenced to 50 years in prison. There wasn't a dry eye, including his, in that courtroom. So yeah, there is a new law in Alabama. It's called the Nicole Castillo, Castillo Law. And if you kill a baby in an accident, then you will go to prison for that. So it, there's something out of that. Um, so let's go back to our story of Abraham. Abraham has his dear son, and he's supposed to sacrifice him. And he's, he's being called back out there. And God tested him, but he spared his son. Why would he do that? What, what was that all about? But I want you to think that about a thousand years after that, there was another son that was offered. It was offered on a hill just like Isaac was. And who understood what this was going on that, other than God? And God sent His Son. Because He knew that, that sheep split in half and doves and rocks and even kids weren't going to be a big enough sacrifice to get us back to Him. Get us back to the garden. Get us back good with God. So He sent His own Son. And then... He turned off the lights. When it was time for the knife to come, he didn't stop it. Um, I love to fish, and not just for people, <laughs> for fish. Um, and we've lived in Helena, and we were doing this big church plan up there. And we want to live here because I like to fish. And my wife was working at a fire department up there, and I worked out of the house. And I said, well, you know, we got these three kids. And they're in college, you know, or about to go to college. And how in the world can we live down at the beach where I could fish on a clear day? So this is our plan. Let's come up with a way to do that. And then we were worried about other things. And finally, my older son, he, uh, after a short five and a half years of college, graduated <laughs> with an awesome degree. I mean, computer science, mathematics minor. Uh, and the government snatched him up, and he moved off to Baltimore. And that left the twins at home, John and Sadie. Um, it's kind of a funny world when you have twins and, and you're at the house because when they leave the house, it's like instant emptiness. You had a bunch, now you got none. But actually, when they went to college, one went to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and the other one to UAB up in Birmingham, and Alabama, Birmingham. And when they were in that situation, they didn't really leave the house because we ended up with more kids at home because all their roommates and friends would come to our house because it was only an hour away, you know, a lot of them from other places. So we, we still wanted this plan, but we were a little worried about it. We said, wow, we're really busy. Maybe we shouldn't do this plan and move it away. Um, so Donna and I came up with a plan as the kids near graduation that we were going to pray about it. We we're going to say, can we follow God and still end up at the beach? And so I don't know. How do you tell? How do you tell you're following God? You all of us want to follow God. Follow God, follow God. Follow God. But how do you know? Give us a roadmap. <laughs> Well, yeah, exactly. Read a Bible, it's in there. Well, I didn't see anything about pretty old key in the Bible. <laughs> so, you know, everybody wants, you know, signs or whatever. And, yeah, and I once heard another preacher say, sign in there. You need a hotel. A sign for a hotel is not a place to hang out. But we went, and, and you can picture the sand out there on the beach. And you heard the, ever heard a line in the sand cross that line? And I'll, you know, beat you up. Um, well, what we did was... If God crosses the lines for us in our lives, then we know He wants us to, to go somewhere else. So we drew all these lines in the sand, and, and the lines of the sand were, were you know, several, pretty big ones. Uh, Donna was working full-time, but she'd been there 27 years. She, had, she could retire any time she wanted. Uh, I had kids in college. I had a house. I had things that had to happen. And so I talked to Donna, and I said, well, you know, the kids are getting near graduation. What do you think about retirement? And she said, well, you know, I really want to make battalion chief. She's a Mountain Brook Fire Department, firefighter and paramedic. I swear I married way over my head, okay? <laughs> and by the way, she's not licensed in Florida, so if you have a problem, we're going to drag you across the state line, and she'll take care of you. So, yes, so awesome. Oh, Florida, Alabama. But, so... 
Anyway, so she said, well, I'm going to apply for battalion chief. She did. She took the test. She did great. She did the interview. Well, the results came out. That was a line in the sand cross. She decided to retire. I said, yes. Um, then we had the kids in college. Well, it was funny with twins in two different schools. They started school on the exact same day. When you have twins, you have to partner. So Donna went to, to put John in his dorm at Tuscaloosa, and I took Sadie and put her in her dorm in Birmingham on the same day, same morning. Boom. Kids, you know, so I, but guess what? They graduated within a half an hour of each other. <laughs> Four years later, what was the odds of that? I mean, they're part of the same system. Couldn't they figure out, hey, maybe we ought not have the graduations at the exact same time? <laughs> but they didn't, so Donna went to Tuscaloosa for John Wesley's graduation, and I went to Birmingham and went through Sadie's graduation. They both graduated from college. Another line of sand was crossed. We had a rule. Every day from age 18 up was a gift from Dad. Every minute after college, you can plan on not living at home because we're not moving you from the dorm to the house. <laughs> this is a great plan. Tell them now. Tell them now, Jasmine. Tell them now because you keep that as the best gift you'll ever give your kid. Have them on their own. I have a, my, sister, my daughter, one of her friends in college, was still living at home, got kicked out this weekend. It was, ended up on our couch. We all were laughing. I said, it's that 23-year-old umbilical cord. It's time to break it. Um, well, my son at Alabama met this wonderful girl and, from Virginia, and they dated all the way through college, and he said, well, I want to marry her, and she accepted. And, um, and so they got married. Now, graduation in May, he wants to get married in June. So, all right, and, said, and we vacationed all the time in Golf and I, I want to get married on the beach. Awesome, great. As long as you don't live home, I'm cool with that. So we went out to Dolphin Island and we got all this plans, we made all the deposits and everything, and then the oil spill happened. And we go down to Dolphin Island and you have to go through a, a National Guard checkpoint to even get to the wedding site. And of course the water smelled wonderful and there was tar all over the beach. And I said, you know what? We're moving the wedding. It's in three weeks, we're gonna move it. So we picked up everything and we moved it all back up to Helena. And we have a good friend who also was in the men's group, that same men's group that Craig was in. He says, you can have it at my place. So we went over to Steve's place, and we had a wedding pool full of sand, and we had our beach wedding. And Sadie, if you ever heard her sing up here, she's just an amazing, ama amazing singer. And uh, Sadie sang Playwood Max Landslide while mom and John Wesley, her twin brother, dance. It was just, it was awesome. It was wonderful. They went off to Hawaii on, on honeymoon, and then they moved off to Clearwater. And another line, the thing is crossed. <laughs> oh my gosh, we might actually do this thing. We have this house. It's been on the market since May. And then Sadie really was only working as a coffee barista. She knew she couldn't move home, but she was barely making it. Now, fortunately, also, they came out of college debt-free. That helped. So they were, they were doing okay, but she was really in a bad situation. So two weeks after her, um, her, son, her brother got married, um, she heard about a job and she says, well, they can use my editing skills since it's right here and it pays versus not getting paid, it's working on tips. And I called the men's group and said, anyone know anybody over there? I'm sure enough, somebody there knew somebody, they put a word in, boom, another line in the sand crossed. All right, then we still had Donna, retired. We still had uh, uh, the ability to move, you know, so we had this house and it's, I don't know, July 2010, is that a good time to sell a house? <laughs> Awful. I said, well, we've had it on the market since May. Nobody's given an offer. Uh, a few days after Sadie got her job, we got an offer. It was a thousand less than our asking price. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and me and John are looking at each other. What now? God wants something to happen. And if there's nothing like that would ever happen in this kind of... Seven houses were sold in that zip code. 250 houses in that price range were listed in July of that year. So I felt like something was going to happen. We're going to follow God. We ended up getting this contract, and so look, it's 20 days to closing. We hadn't even thought about where to live, <laughs> and we had to be out of that house. So uh, we squeezed out in the middle of the wedding and all this other stuff. We squeezed out a little wedding of four days to find somewhere to live on the water, and so maybe we had to rent. You know, just be careful. And it took, you know, we were so worried about selling the house. Last thing we wanted to do is jump right back in. So. We came down here and we went to Dolphin Island. Okay, let's go check out Dolphin Island. Well, you can't rent on Dolphin Island because all the rental places were taken up by BP oil workers. So we came across the ferry, started down the, the quay here, and we were going to go all the way to St. Augustine in four days. We were going to find the place to live. 
We met to Sam Dustin and I couldn't look at another house. I swear, they were all the same to me by the time we got to the end of that ridiculous trip. And so we went back to Birmingham, we had our list. And one of the places we looked at was a condo here on Perdido Key. And it's over on, on the ICW and we decided, hey, a condo, you know, we lived in a house for a long time, but we don't have any kids, so why not do the condo? So we ended up moving in right here, five miles from the floor of Bama, one mile from Perdido Bay, and I met the church. So we ended up there and we were trying to figure it all out. So let's just kind of run through this. We, uh, we left, we sold the house, we loaded a truck, we drove over, left the truck temporarily, took the car, we went to the closing attorney, closed on the house, dropped, took Donna to her retirement party, left there and went and stayed at my friend's house who offered us the wedding. He had a pool house, we stayed there. Because we had no house, we had no kids, and we were totally free and ready to move. All right, all this story I'm telling you is in 90 days. You think about the big events in your life. You've got moving, you've got your kids graduating from college, you've got a wedding, you've got retirement, you've got selling a house. We did that in 90 days. I'm saying God is on a freight train to Perdido Key. <laughs> so we went down there. So we didn't know why, you know, and we kept saying, why do you think he wants us here? You know, we're looking at this place by ourselves. That's a great place to be. And I do have a wonderful place. It's just every morning I wake up and I see water, and that's what I wanted. And so we felt like we wanted to be here, but we didn't know why. And we started doing a little church shopping, and Donna's running back and forth to the newlyweds down in Clearwater and, and running up to Birmingham to see Sadie. And so some of these church kicking tire thing that we did, you know, checking out churches, some of y'all doing that today. Um, we, went, we went over to check out this Perdido Bay Methodist. So we went to the 9 o'clock contemporary service. And, you know, my daughter sings, and she's in a praise band that is unbelievable, unbelievably good. And so our standards were like off the chart. Oh, you know. And then I went to, and I said, hey, it was okay. You know, it wasn't perfect, but it was okay. And then when Donna came back the next week, I said, let's go over and check out this Perdido Bay church. And so we went in there, and we're sitting there, and I said, by the way, the minister's name is Darren. Darren, Darren, he said, he's all right. He's a pretty good preacher. That part I like. And so, anyway, I'm just kidding. It was actually a very friendly place. And we're sitting there, and Darren does this announcement. He says, i got an announcement to make. We're going to start a new church at the floor of Mamma. We looked at each other. I didn't hear another word the rest of that service. I don't know what he talked about. It didn't matter what he talked about. God told us why we were supposed to be here. We planted a church. We know how to do this. That's our skill set. My gosh, that's what we're going to do. We couldn't wait to meet with Darren. He met at Hub Stacy's. We said, look what happened. And I gave him the story I just told you. And he said, you know, we were praying about this idea. We were praying about this service, and we knew God was going to send the workers down to do it. I said, well, here we are. Let's do it. And it took six months, but we did it. So uh, we've been here about almost a year, and a foreclosure came out in the building we have in we said, we ought to plant some roots. I said this, and then the foreclosure came up two days later. Five days later, I had a contract on a condo in the same building. And on Labor Day during Tropical Storm Lean, we moved from one unit to the other upwind. I'll never forget dragging that mattress against Tropical Storm Lee. And the rudder team here that does that, thank you, the rudder team that comes in um, helped me move. So we went over to Hub Stacy's. I was going to trade him to lunch. And we're over at the Hub, and... Jeremy went to introduce me and Donna to a church member that was there. And he goes, this is John and Donna Mason Smith. God sent them here to start a service at the floor of Bama. <laughs> you know, going to knock me over. I knew that, but I never heard myself introduced that way. And it was quite a shock. It was, it was quite amazing, but it was true. I really do believe it's true. So you're at the floor of Bama today. And i got a question for you. Are you being led here? Each of you can look back in your life and you can see a part of your life that says, wow, I guess God was there. Look at how He steered me to where I need to be. But maybe it's just opening yourself up to that. I did it through a men's group that taught us to listen to what God was saying and to send us in the right direction, to give us the tools we need. And He always does. I'm telling you, I'm not a preacher. Believe me. I'm a sales guy. But in reality, here I am preaching to the biggest crowd that's ever been at the floor of worship on the water, I guarantee you. I know. I'm going to ask the band to come back up in a minute because I'm going to have a prayer. We're going we're gonna to do something a little bit different uh, during our prayer time. Um, there may be things in your life that's keeping you from following God. 
You want to follow God? You've heard maybe, not just me, because I don't, what do I got? I just told you a story. But you're here today for a reason. Nobody just comes to church, okay? <laughs> There's a reason you're here today. If your reason for being here is that you want to be closer to God, I think that this is a good time to pray for that. And you don't have to come up. We do have this if you want to. But you don't have to come up. You stay right where you are. That's cool. Um, but we want to pray with you. I've never been in such a praying church as Perdita Bay. Oh my gosh, these people pray. And when you put something God can card, there you got one right here. When you put a God can card in, and you say, pray for me. I want to be closer to Jesus. I want somebody in my life. I want to be baptized. I want to know what you know. I want to start. I want the sin in my life out of my way so I can come back to you. You put that on a card, and you will not only get it, the card ain't going to give it to you, but you'll get somebody praying with you. And if you want somebody to help you with that, then you will certainly get that. So we're going to have a word of prayer. I'm asking, Rudder team, would you all stand up and be very identifiable? Maybe even a couple come in here. Each of them have these cards. I want you to take a card. If you want to be closer to God, and you want to put that on there, and then just share, if you want, your contact information. And Jeremy, me, or one of the Rudder team, we're going to get here, right? And we'll come by and, and pray with you or contact you if you put that on there. And we'll be happy to do that. Let's go to the Word of Prayer. Here I am once again. 